gentlemen, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Today is a day of great pleasure for the Billier family. To check my buttons and see if they're all there. By the authority vested in me as scouting coordinator for Troop 391 of the Overland Park Christian Church in the Iron Quill District, I declare this Eagle Court of Honor to be in session. Lord God, we invoke your presence, officially and formally, but knowingly in mind and heart are aware of your continual presence. We ask a special blessing on David, on the Billier family, on this scout troop. We give thanks to you for the freedom in this nation, for the openness of this congregation, and for the fellowship which has reverence in its heart and its mind. Amen. I'd like to welcome everyone to this court of honor for David Billier. And I have would like to also welcome some guests that we have. Uh, David's uncle is here, Mr. Merrill Billier. Would you rise? I can see you. Thank you, sir. We also have one of our key scouters here, uh, Mr. Charles Bickerstaff, who was our professional district executive. Charles, at this point, I would like to um, call on Mr. Walter Yant, our scoutmaster, who will read the citation uh, for David. David R. Billier entered Scout Troop 391 on June 2nd, 1975, having graduated from Weeblow's Cub Scout Pack 3493, holding the rank of Arrow of Light, and achieved Tenderfoot in this troop <clears throat> October 1975. He achieved Second Class Scout July 1976, and First Class Scout, September 1977. After earning eight merit badges, including four of those required and completing all other requirements, Scout Billier was awarded the rank of Star, February 1979. Three additional merit badges were earned and service time completed to qualify him for the rank of life, August 1979. A total of 27 merit badges were earned and a project completed to qualify Scout Billier for the rank of Eagle, March 22, 1982. Other awards achieved and activities included the God of Country Award in 1977, the World Conservation Award, 149 days and nights of camping, including six long-term summer camps, two expeditions to Philmont Scout Ranch, one canoe trip to Canadian White Otter Wilderness. Scout Billier has served as assistant patrol leader, patrol leader, and as a member of Leadership Corps. He is also a Brotherhood member of Order of, Arrow, of the Arrow. Troop 391 is proud to award Scout David R. Billier the rank of Eagle with bronze palm on this sixth day of June, 1982. During the introduction of guests, there's one gentleman here that I failed to notice and I did not see come in, and uh, he is one of our past scout masters. I see Mr. Robert Mize in the audience. Would you stand up, Mr. Mize? 
Appreciate your being here, sir. Each Eagle Scout has a project requirement. This project must be approved by his scoutmaster, by his troop committee, and by the district by the, uh, the district in which he resides. It must be for the benefit of the church, the school, or the community. In this case, David's project was for the benefit of this church. And to give you some details on how beneficial that was to this church, I would like to ask Dr. Forrest Haggard if he will give you some details. It's been well over two years since uh, David Villiers talked with me about different projects that would be available in this congregation. And um, in the middle of all the things that I talked about with him, I gave him one idea that uh, was so difficult that I sort of did it jokingly. Uh, well, just threw it in, which was the to, to carry all the, the the job responsibilities of the framing and uh, posting and putting up of the, ch of the photographs of all the past chairpersons of this congregation. It had been a project uh, undertaken twice by committees in the church. That's probably why it failed, because it had a committee. And had failed miserably both times because it was so complicated. David accepted that project it's my understanding, although I don't know I should say this now, that somewhere along the middle of it, I think he gave up the idea that he would ever get the eagle and just decided to finish the project come hell or high water, if I can use that statement. He didn't use those words, but it became a stubborn sort of event for him that he was going to complete that project. The multitude of details in that project are outlined in some sketchy form in photographs that you'll see uh, during the reception on the display table. But he carried the ball through the change of plans, through architectural differences of opinion, through three executive committees of this church, through changes of leaders and pastors, uh, through changes of color, changes of location, finding pictures of people long disappeared, people who didn't want their picture taken, people who didn't like the picture they already had taken. <laughs> I can name some more, but those are, I better stop there. And in that process, the Billier home became the repository for two years of the faces of past chairman of this congregation, for whom I'm sure have left an indelible memory of <laughs> you <laughs> and occupied your front room for a long period of time. The end product is visible. It tied in with a major project of this congregation in the building of a historical room and the renovation and refurbishing of an area of the church. It'll be here as long as the building exists. If I do ever write a recommendation for Dave Villiers for a job, there are many attributes that I can give to him in terms of persistence, skill, administrative ability that belong to someone of a chronologically much older. I'm proud to speak about that project on behalf of this church. I believe I move right in and introduce Walt Reinhardt. Is that right, Jim? It says I do here, and I should do what it says I'm supposed to do. Introduction of Mr. Reinhardt by Dr. Haggard. There are times in the life of this scout troop, as uh, pastor of the church, that I think, uh, yeah, without tongue in cheek, I can say that uh, we have the intervention of a supreme being in helping us. I think that was true when Bob came in, for example. That's not, that's not said lightly, that's said truthfully. And I think that was true when Walt Reinhardt became scoutmaster here. I have never seen a man so laid back up front and so busy behind the scene, so well organized without seeming to be highly organized. And I watched the scout troop and I watched young people develop under that kind of leadership ability. 
And I don't see very often in human beings the attributes of leadership exhibited as I have seen in Walt Reinhardt's life. His scoutmastership here was a strong, good event for us. And I'm proud to introduce him to you today to bring the Eagle Challenge for this Eagle Court. Scoutmaster Walt. Yes, I'm one of the has-beens of 391, but along with Bob, I'd like to say I think that he'll share with me that the troop is certainly in good hands today. Going places, doing things, doing things, and doing things, and you keep doing those things, there's no problem. The guys will seek you out. And I'm very, very proud that coming back to Overland Park, 391 is one of the big ones. I have the honor to give the Eagle Scout charge this afternoon on the occasion of David's elevation to the highest progress award in scouting. The Boy Scouts of all nations constitute one of the most wholesome and significant influences in the world's history. You, David, have been counted worthy of this high recognition in the Boy Scouts of America. All who know you rejoice in your achievement. Eagle candidate David Billier, I charge you to enter this Eagle Scout Brotherhood holding without reservation and never before you the ideals of honor and service. By the repetition of the Eagle Scout promise before your fellow members, you will become an Eagle Scout. Though the words you use be similar to those by which you joined scouting, today they will mean more than they would have meant at any time in the past. When you pledge yourself on your sacred honor, you will be sealing your eternal loyalty to the code of the Eagle Scout with the words which close the Declaration of Independence. Scout. Dan Chut. Scout sign. Repeat after me. I reaffirm my allegiance to the three promises of the Scout Oath. I thoughtfully recognize and take upon myself the obligations and responsibilities of an Eagle Scout. On my honor, I will do my best to make my training an example and my status and my influence count strongly for better scouting and for better citizenship in my troop, in my community, and in my contacts with other people. This I pledge my sacred honor to. I want to take a very few minutes this afternoon to throw something of a challenge out, hopefully, to David. It's awfully hard to challenge a fast-moving, hard-driving young man who has done so well so far. We might goof up the program. Eagle Scout David R. Billier. Sounds good, doesn't it? Do you remember the feeling when you reached the top of Phillips at Philmont the first time? 
the top. You know that section where it's rocky towards the south, where you feel you're above the trees? Fantastic view. To the east and southeast, the rest of the Philmont Scouting Paradise. Over on the other side, to the north, you can see Baldy. See to the west. If you went up on top of Baldy, you could see even further because you're even higher, the highest at Philmont. But for you, Mount Phillips has been your highest so far. And I don't know how tired you were when you got to the top, but you did notice that there were places even higher. Well, now you made it to the top of the scouting trail, the highest peak in scouting, and you feel great, and you deserve to feel great. A tremendous achievement with many reasons why you could have missed. But now, looking off to new horizons, there are even greater peaks, higher achievements, waiting, waiting for you. Whether you are aware of it or not, the scouting program introduced you to a system, David, that apparently worked. A system of setting goals and objectives and then moving towards those objectives and those goals. This system really does work. It's worked so far for you. It can work for everybody. One of the things that makes it work is that a target out there causes you to move towards it. It establishes a direction of movement. Some important ingredients, however, to bring about and achieve your goal, your objective, your success, is perseverance and maintaining a positive attitude. And I can do it attitude. When we were babies, we climbed about, explored, probed, looked into, climbed over, always curious and with perseverance to the point that many times too much for our parents to handle. You did not know of anything referring to, I can't, I don't have a chance, I'm too small. There was no negative attitude, just an ongoing desire to keep going and see what was around the next corner or in the kitchen cabinet or what a pet dog's ear tastes like. Somehow we have to try to bring this back, to maintain it, to maintain that eagerness, blanking out the negatives, thinking we can with no thought about can't. Let the other folks worry about the can'ts or the don't know hows. One of the biggest delays or roadblocks on your route to Eagle was your service project. You told me you put it off after deciding to do it, after setting a difficult but worthwhile project as an objective. You put it off Better than a year you put it off because you thought you couldn't really do it. Was the objective too high or did you lack the positive attitude to keep moving? Well, you got on the track again and you started moving again and you did it. And yes, you were surprised and some other people were surprised a very worthwhile project. David, many people talk about success and there are many personal interpretations of what it is. But I believe that when you achieve a goal that you set for yourself, you are a success. Right then, you are successful because you achieved a goal that you set for yourself. When setting your goals, set them high enough to have to push yourself a little, but not too high as not to enjoy yourself. 
I believe the most important thing about the goal-setting approach to success is the movement it creates. Positive movement. Movement toward objectives. Someone once said that basically there are three kinds of people. You've probably heard this before. Those who let things happen, those that watch things happen, and those that make things happen. Which one are you, David? Younger scouts, friends, parents are watching you. Set a good example, for there are always those younger people looking for a pattern to follow. Your scouting life has provided many experiences, good and bad, but they provided learning. Learning that you cannot imagine now. I remember you coming to your scoutmaster for help on your first camp out with Troop 391. Seems you were upset about a tick attached to your breastbone. Your scoutmaster, in attempting to help, used a fellow leader's lit cigarette to hopefully cause the tick to back out, to let go. It didn't work. And you claimed you got burned on the chest. You learned from this. You now believe ticks are best removed with fine tweezers. And no, not that old scoutmasters are dangerous, but that cigarettes can be injurious to your health. Hopefully, David, you will be able to recall, when needed, from the vast storehouse of knowledge you are constantly building. Sharing, and David, helping others. You have had the help of buddies, guidance from your scout leaders, encouragement, love, and support from mom and dad. There may be a day when you will have to do it on your own. Be sure to maintain friendships as part of your objectives, David. David, now remembering your Cub Scout motto, do your best. Your Boy Scout motto, be prepared. Set your goals and move toward them. Don't compromise your standards or moral principles. Maintain your friendships, and yes, be sure to stop and smell the flowers along the way. Congratulations. Good luck along the trails ahead, and Godspeed. Thank you. I would like to make one little comment about David's project. The report on that project is ultimately sent to the national office in Texas. They receive down there some 20,000 of these reports a year. As a result, they do not file them, they dispose of them after they've once passed on them. However, some special projects that they feel are worthy of retention are sent back to the candidate for his own keeping. This happened to David's, it came back with a nice letter from the National stating that they didn't feel that they wanted to dispose of it. It contained a lot of photographs and a well-written report. So I was very happy to be able to deliver David his report back from National. At this time, we'll make the presentation of the Eagle Award. And if David's parents will please move to the platform, why Mr. Raymond Anderson, our committee chairman, will assist in the presentation of the, of the medal.
The Eagle Badge is being presented with palm attached. David, I give to you the miniature Eagle Badge for you to present to your mother. Give you the Father's Eagle Scout tie tag for you to present to your father. Traditionally, nationwide, the Elks Lodge makes a presentation to each Eagle candidate at his court of honor. And so it is done in this district as well as over the city. Lodge number 2395 will present a certificate this afternoon representing 2395 will Mr. B, Mr. James Jordan. Mr. Jordan? Eagle Scout David R. Billier is with great pride in the protective order of Elks in presenting you the American flag because you have demonstrated that you daily practice the teaching of democracy. We are proud to call you our fellow citizen because you have worked hard to prove that you believe in the United States as one nation under God with liberty and justice for all. As the red, white, and blue colors of the cloth went to make a beautiful flag, so the skills you mastered have blended together to make you an outstanding citizen. Thank you. And now David will deliver his response. I'd like to thank everybody that came. Um, everybody says that Eagle's a hard uh, rank to obtain. Now this is true, and everybody says, well, you need to thank everybody that did it. Well, I'd like to thank my parents and all the leaders, but I think there's even more of a challenge in the peers that you have. The scouts that are with you in your troop are the ones that really make you obtain your eagle. Um, I'd like to have special recognition for those that worked on my project. Anybody that worked on my project, please stand. These are the scouts. These are the scouts that came and helped willingly. These are the people that will help you anytime you need it. They, they willingly helped me. They put out their best. And I think we achieved a good goal. I'd like to thank them and all the other scouts in the troop for they made it a challenge to get your eagle. And they also help you along the road. Thank you. Now, Dr. Haggard will deliver a benediction. Lord God, we give you thanks for this event. Ask your watchful care in our journey. May our journey be with wisdom, with understanding, and with sharing one with the other. Amen. To deliver the closing, I will call on Dr. Billier again. We had a couple of people come in uh, late that uh, should have been introduced. Uh, David's uh, great uncle and aunt, uh, Henry and Dorothy Baker from St. Joe. Would you stand up, please, Henry? Dorothy. Thank you. <laughs> we'll ask the audience to remain uh, until the scout troop has retired. Um, and then we will invite you to the reception in the fireside room straight down the hall to your left. We thank you for attending this uh, Eagle Court of Honor. 
And that closes this court. Will the Senior Patrol Leader please take charge?